This section heading is called Adding Vulnerable Code. So now the way that this whole course was designed is it basically was designed around the concept that you can't fully understand a vulnerability unless you understand how the system works. So now in this section here, we're going to add some vulnerable code. But in order to understand the vulnerability, we have to understand how the code works because the code is a part of the system. So that's what we're going to do in this section here. We're going to get an understanding of how this code works, and then later on we're going to exploit it. So first, let's navigate to yearbank.com so we can retrieve our custom homepage. We're going to minimize the browser, then we're going to open up WinSCP. So inside of lab4 directory, we're going to find a PHP script. So inside of this PHP script, there's going to be some HTML that's embedded with PHP. So we're going to navigate to, sorry, we're going to go here, lab4, and then there's the PHP script. So now in order to understand how this HTML embedded with PHP works, is we're going to set this to be the action within our index.php file. So we're going to run that PHP script, and then we're going to get a better understanding of how that script actually works. So going inside of our index.php file, we need to find our action attribute, and then we're going to set it to that file. So that file name was display underscore name. So I'm going to save this and then minimize. And then I'm going to go back over to our browser. We're going to do a page refresh to read in the new change. And now we're going to supply the username Alice. And we can either hit enter or press login here. So here we can see the results of executing that script. So now in order to understand the HTML and PHP within the script, we're going to do a page to script comparison. So we're going to pull back up. Sorry, we're going to go inside of here and we're going to open up this script and then we're going to go and place it right like this. So again, a script to page comparison. Okay, so now the HTML in here. So the first thing that we encounter is an HTML div. So your divs are used to add structure to web pages. They also serve as kind of anchors so things don't bleed around. So we can see a part of the div element is going to be some PHP code. So again, the element in this case being from the beginning tag to the ending tag. So in between, we have the PHP code. And what this div is saying, and you can see inside of the opening tag over here, we're using this text align right with 95%. So whatever this PHP code is doing in here, we're going to display it 95% to the right. And again, that's what we see Alice is over here. So now when looking at the PHP code, we're going to be introducing a new PHP function. It's called the request function. So your request functions can be used to retrieve data that's been submitted via a form. So we can see over here that, in fact, we're requesting from that username input field based on this unique token ID. So what we're saying here is this. If we get redirected to this web page and that form has been submitted, then what we're going to do is we're going to echo to the screen that username 95% to the right. And that's essentially what we did. Now, if we come to this web page and a form has not been submitted, then what we're going to do is we're going to echo to the screen, please log in, again, 95% to the right. Now, if we move a little further down, you're going to see some additional HTML. So this HTML here is just for aesthetic reasons. So essentially, the HR slash over here is just adding a horizontal line. And then we're adding some white space between the line and then whatever else comes after it. OK, so now we're going to add the contents of this script to our index.php file. So I'm going to select all, copy, and then we can close. We're going to do over here, click it twice, pull up that page, and now we're going to place our cursor at the end of the beginning body tag, hit enter, and then come up here, and you can just do a paste. We also need to adjust back our action attribute to check login.php. So now we're going to do a save, and we can close it. We're going to go back to our page, do a page refresh, and there we go. OK, perfect. OK, so how might we be using this sort of functionality on our web page? Well, here's what I'd like you to imagine. Imagine that we have a registration link. 
and that you new users that don't currently have a login that are going to create one are going to be redirected to a registration page. Now on that registration page, there's going to be a form and that form for the username is going to go by the same unique token ID value so that when users get redirected back to this page, we're going to display their username up over here to the right. So now something else. I'd like you to right click and then view the page source. And then inside the page source, I'd like you to take note that the PHP is not visible on the client side. And that's because it's a server side programming language and it's only visible on the server side.